Uh, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is May 11th, 2023, and this is the EU US edition. Uh, today we have myself, Mark Waite, and Bruno Varachtin. Uh, thanks for joining, and uh, we'll welcome others as they come in. Uh, on the agenda, I have uh, the April newsletter, which we just published yesterday. Uh, the pipeline step reference had uh, an issue uh, just this past week. Um, we've got some temporary fix involved, but uh, we'll discuss that a little bit more. Google Summer of Code is officially now underway with the projects and contributors being announced. So uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, we can discuss the community feedback suggestions that Alex Brandes has uh, provided in a pull request. Uh, there's the documentation transition from Java 11 to Java 17. Uh, end of life notifications in Jenkins core, which is something that we've been discussing and uh, going back and forth on what that might look like and what we can do for that. Uh, the early end of life for CentOS 7 in Jenkins, again, something that we've been discussing for a bit now. And uh, a newer topic is improving the developer documentation so that we can remove the work in progress flags. Uh, there's a handful of those pages. I've actually created a list of them, and we'll go over that. Uh, anything else to add to the agenda here, or uh, is that looking good for everyone so far? Nothing else for me. Okay, cool. Uh, first things first, again, so we just published our April newsletter yesterday. Uh, this is live. It has uh, everything that we've accomplished over the month of April, some really nice insight. Uh, and just a big shout out and thanks to DigitalOcean. We mentioned it a couple of times throughout the newsletter, but they did provide us with uh, an additional credit to help us get through some higher usage times. Uh, so we're very, very thankful for that. Uh, there are other notes and there is a brief uh, recap of what uh, Jenkins at CDCon. Um, since it just finished up, we will have more information about this later on. And uh, Alyssa Tong, who uh, contributed the uh, outreach and advocacy part uh, noted that the CDF YouTube channel will actually have recordings in about two weeks or so. So keep an eye out for more there. Uh, and we'll actually have a blog post to announce the CDF award or the Jenkins awards winners that were also presented at CDCon. Um, uh, highlighting uh, Daniel Beck, Jan Firecheck, and um, Mark, do you remember who won the security award off the top of your head? I forget. Or so that was it. Daniel Beck was security. Jan Farachik yep. was most valuable contributor. And yep. I got the advocate award. That's right. It was you. You won. So yeah, so uh, lot, lots of great times and there will be more insights and uh, everything from CDCon, GitOpsCon in the coming weeks from various outlets. Uh, so last week there was an issue where the pipeline steps uh, page was not showing nested options for some of the uh, various steps and uh, strings. Uh, we did some backtracking and testing and found uh, where the issue looks to have been created. Uh, Mark's created a temporary fix. So right now, if you were to go, to, if we go to the um, steps reference guide, it does display properly now. So. Um, it has been fixed in the meantime. There still needs to be some testing done and some understanding of what might have happened there. Um, but uh, this uh, nested choice of objects list was not showing up whatsoever. Uh, again, the temporary fix has solved that for the time being. The nested objects are all being listed throughout the guide. Um, so we're good with that for the time being. But again, there is an issue in GitHub for this. There's more testing and work that can be done. Um, then you can follow the additional information and work there. Yeah, so really pleased actually to share that that Vihan Thora, the author of the Pipeline Steps doc generator most recent changes. So Vihan was a Google Summer of Code contributor last year in 2022. And mm -hmm. that project was what created that nice work on that, that much better checkout page. Vihan did an investigation himself and was able to duplicate the problem on his own development environment. His workload right now is heavy, and so he's not able to do much more than that. But I've left it open that there is a, an automated test now that will reject or block any pull request that would cause the, the bug to reappear, to bug, the bug to again become visible. 
So the automated test is is flawed and imperfect and sort of horrible in that it checks to see if a particular file is at least 75 kilobytes long. But that's good enough. It detects the problem. Yeah, and I don't know that Vihan will ever be able to submit a full fix. What Vihan said was, hey, I'm I'm heavily loaded at work right now. And I, I replied, we'll leave the issue open. And if he or I or someone else is able to work on it, great. For right now, we have the benefit that uh, the documentation won't be broken. Mm -hmm. The negative is it means that we're we're stuck one version of parent palm behind the current parent palm version for the Jen for Jenkins core. And that's okay. Yeah, one version behind. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And what it probably needs is someone who's willing to go in and investigate fairly deep details about why is this thing failing in this way now? It's not not at all clear to me what's going on that's causing the failure, but I did a very high level investigation, right? My investigation was find the change that causes the problem and write a test that will tell me if the problem is visible or not. That's it for me. Great. Thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate the uh, additional insight and information on this. And uh, yeah, and thanks to Vihan for, uh, first of all, creating the steps docs in the first place. That is incredible uh, and uh, night and day difference from before. Uh, but yeah, this is something that uh, we can definitely step in and help out with and, do, and uh, investigate if we can. So great. Uh, next up, the Google Summer of Code uh, has officially announced its uh, accepted projects and contributors. Uh, so we did have a blog post to announce this and share this that was published uh, just last week, but um, just really thankful for all of the participants, candidates, applicants, the work that has been done already is outstanding. We had a record, like a uh, way higher than uh, average number of proposal submissions in and of itself, uh, giving all of the uh, lead mentors and org admins a lot more work to do, but uh, they got it done. Huge thanks to Alyssa, John mark Bruno, and Chris Stern for taking care of this and leading us in, on this. It's, it's been fantastic and we couldn't do any of it without you. So, um, yeah, just congrats to all of the uh, selected participants and contributors. We're really excited about what's to come and uh, we hope you get as much out of the Google Summer of Code as uh, you possibly can. Uh, the four projects that were accepted are the alternative build tools for Jenkins.io, uh, the GitLab plugin modernization, uh, Docker for quick start, and the plugin health scores probe projects. Uh, so, um, just continuing the work that we've been uh, getting done and looking to move Jenkins.io and Jenkins in general to the next level. So um, really, really excited. Um, yeah, uh, all the projects are uh, medium complexity. So uh, shouldn't be anything that we can't finish or at least get to a really good point with by the time uh, September, the end of September rolls around. Uh, next up, so uh, there was a pull request that Alex Brandes had submitted recently um, suggesting possible revisions to the community feedback. Uh, specifically, uh, this refers to the change log um, options for users to respond. Uh, there are pros and cons to this. There's, you know, um, things that could be improved for sure, uh, but uh, at this point in time, it's tough to say what would be a better option. This does provide some insight that is useful. Uh, and at the very least, even if it's not the most intuitive thing for a user to use, or if there isn't a way to prevent uh, things like Jenkins dash one from coming through, uh, there is still some value there. Uh, it would obviously make uh, life a lot easier if we could go and track these submissions back to the original creator or submitter so that we could talk with them and discuss further what kind of issues they're facing and what kind of uh, troubleshooting could be performed. But um, removing it entirely is a little drastic in the sense of, for me at least, um, we're allowing transparency, we're at least giving that uh, that kind of litmus test sort of uh, overview to, to, to remain. Uh, 
so people can just make a decision based on, okay, a lot of people are not having any issues, or maybe there are some issues here that are that I would like to prevent from happening. Um, so even if it's just a cursory piece of information, it's still something to go off of. Um, yeah, Mark, Bruno, did you have, I know that uh, Mark, you've commented and suggested in the issue, but uh, any other thoughts or suggestions? I, I, I'm a little bit, feel a little bit sheepish, a little bit ashamed to admit that I didn't discuss it with Alex Brandis when he and I were having dinner at CDCon two different nights. The topic didn't even come up. We were having many other good conversations, but not that one. <laughs> You don't have to feel ashamed. Of course, I would have done the same thing, you know, sharing a nice dinner with a nice person. Of course. Uh, no, uh, I was wondering, there is no incentive to report everything goes well. So why do people click on the sun icon? I, I feel I feel grateful yeah. for that because uh, most of the time people just say when everything is going wrong, not when it's going right. So Correct. it works. And I don't know why. And, and your your observation is, and the data supports that. We see, I see, for instance, that 90,000 to as many as 100,000 users upgrade to the most recent version within four weeks of its release on the LTS. So this is the version, the page that that Kevin shows. When I look at the distribution of versions adopting the Git plugin, so one example, right? I see that there are from 80,000 to up to 100,000 that regularly adopt the most recent release. And yet with 80,000 controllers, 70 positive votes or 140 or 190, obviously there's not much incentive for people to report their results. And we're okay with that, right? It's, it's, it does no harm for them. We, we don't, we don't, I don't think we want to put any more active mechanisms to encourage people to come click these because it's okay, the data we're getting. Okay, and uh, Kevin, you ask for thoughts. So let me give you <laughs> some things. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really proud of it, but I'm not so good at math. So what if we had some percentage written, you know, because I know three is nothing compared to 69, for example, but just as percentage it could help me understanding what's going on. And uh, could we have some kind of graphics, you know, showing the progression along the time of the number of, yes, it's doing okay. No, it's not doing, it doesn't make sense. I know it was just an idea, you know, a graphic mm. of some sort showing the sure. progression, but yeah, it it's not meaningful as of course the code is, static so the progression in time doesn't mean anything as the code doesn't change so forget it it was just a junk idea well but but i think i think you've got an at least to me it sounds like an interesting concept when you think about what how might we graph that data and we can graph the data right we could have a separate indicator which says how many people gave a rating how, how many how many times people is the wrong wrong number how many times was the ratings icon clicked because that's literally what what it's measuring right mm -hmm. so rating icon clicks and and saying hey that that may already help us see something and then fraction of those that were rollbacks um also could be interesting yeah uh, and i I, uh, something I thought of, Mark, when you mentioned that uh, you notice it's like a four week span of adoption. Um, it would be interesting to see what those numbers are like right when the L new LTS drops and like it's gradually like graphing it, like Bruno saying and seeing, you know, first week there's X amount of clicks, but the second week there's this many more clicks. And then the third week it maybe drops down a bit, but then the fourth week everyone's to a point where they're like, okay, this is fine. The next LTS is coming out, I can upgrade. So. It would be it would be interesting to see like the trend of uh, when the, most people are actually like clicking on that or something. Mm, yeah. Yep. So, so yeah. No, all great ideas. Thank so you very much. Bruno. Pull requests are welcomed. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would about to come. Yeah. yeah and, and you could yeah. you could predict that the generation of most conversations, right? Pull requests yeah. welcomed. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay.
Perfect. Thank you very much, Mark. And thank you, Bruno, for sharing your thoughts. I like, I like really enjoy the idea of having a graph to at least share some more insight into what's going on. Uh, next up on the agenda, so uh, we've been discussing and uh, talking about the documentation transition from Java 11 to Java 17. Uh, this was originally spurred by the upcoming release of Debian 12, which will not ship with uh, JDK 11. So uh, we decided that uh, the Jenkins documentation for installation for Java requirements, stuff like that, will transition it to using Java 17 as the preferred option so that we can get that transition happening now and encourage people to use the top of the line. Uh, 17 provides better testing, faster testing, uh, more edge testing, just develop uh, development environment overall is better. So uh, there's no reason not to use Java 17. Um, but if we don't start using it now, people may be more reluctant to try it on their own. So um, this would at least give them the indication that Jenkins endorses using Java 17 through, in the project. And that's what we want to do. So um, yeah, there's a GitHub issue for this that I've created uh, that goes through and explains this a bit further. Uh, also highlights some pages where this information would need to be updated. I started working on this myself and uh, have gotten to a couple places where I'm okay with the information. Um, I have run into a couple struggles of just trying to make sure that I'm getting the steps exactly correct and make sure that I can go down to the root level. But um, it's still being worked on. It's still something that we need to do and we'll be working on. Um, so even though the Debian 12 release date is looking at June 2023 right now, uh, we're hoping to have that finish before that happens. Um, plugins do not need to uh, require J Java 17, but we are saying that plugins should test with both. Um, the tutorial does guide them to test with both uh, describe tests with both Java 17 and Java 11. So uh, the plugins and other documentation should reflect that. Uh, there is no open pull request yet for this. Uh, I have been working on things locally and will be submitting a, pull a draft pull request at the very least to uh, get that into uh, GitHub and make sure that it's available for others to check out, comment, review, suggest, uh, and potentially uh, assist with in getting some of the information corrected or some of the steps properly squared away. Um, uh, there's also a uh, section in the current upgrading Java guidelines that discusses the uh, Oracle JDK 11 licensing and how it's not available to be listed. Uh, at this time, the, the Oracle JDK 17 may not fall under the same limitation. So uh, I'm doing a little bit of investigation to find out whether or not that's an open, a more open policy and it can be used. Uh, if not, we'll make sure that's clear as well. Um, is there anything else on the uh, Java 17 transition, Mark, that you wanted to make sure we discuss or put in the notes here? Or... Nope. That's okay. the, those are the topics I'm aware of. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the end of life notifications in Jenkins core is something that, again, we've been discussing. Uh, Mark's been able to talk with some other contributors and such as Chris Stern, as Alex Brandes, to get some feedback and suggestions on how those could be handled and where. Um, Mark has submitted a pull, uh, pull request, a draft pull request to add the monitors. Um, however, uh, there was some suggestions and feedback saying that it might be uh, a little much or that something can be done to make things easier for the process involved. Uh, so it just needs some rework. Mark will be taking care of that and handling things, and uh, we'll be able to share more info when it's available. Uh, but we are getting somewhere with that, and that's the important thing. And we do have the means of uh, providing an end-of-life notification. It's just a matter of how it actually is done. Oh, yeah. We, or, once that's merged, we will have. And right. and it. I've got a I've got a major rework to do on that pull request. It's it it was a good first experiment and it's good to throw the first experiment away so i got some good feedback and the feedback will make the the final implementation much better great good to know thank you very much mark uh and as noted uh not available not an option just yet but 
uh, when it comes, it will be very made aware. Um, the early end of CentOS 7 for the Jenkins project has been being has been discussed uh, at length for some time, and uh, I think we're at the point where now um, Marco uh, JEP is just going to be submitted for that, and we'll be going from there with it. Or is there? Yeah, I, I think I may even. So it's been awfully quiet in my request to the Jenkins developers list. I submitted a message to the Jenkins developers list saying I'm proposing this, and uh, and no no responses that were negative to it. Uh, Basil Crow observed, "Hey, we've already dropped support, and other projects have already dropped support uh, in various subsections. For instance, the Docker contain the container image on which we base our agent images, our CentOS seven agent images, and our CentOS seven controller image has been unmaintained since 2020." So, so it's not that we're somehow doing something breathtakingly different. There are many places where CentOS 7 support and Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 support is going away. Great. Uh, yeah, and I, I did uh, see in Basil's message about where other projects have dropped that support as well. So um, yeah, I think it's good that we have the actual experiences and, and anecdotal evidence to say, hey, we're not the only ones. This is pretty you know, common. So yeah, great. Um, and then the last topic I had on the agenda is uh, improving the developer documentation so that we can remove the work in progress flags. Uh, so um, this is definitely something that can be handled by uh, various people. Um, this isn't a one person job by any means. Uh, what I've done to help is create a list of the work in progress pages. Uh, so I've got the directory and then the uh, pages and what I think their prioritization should be. Uh, the stars are just one through five, five being the most urgent, one being not. Um, but things like managing users, managing tools, um, obviously securing Jenkins, these are important topics, but uh, they also require that knowledge and that expertise, that know-how of what these changes should be, what the content should be updated to, or what should be uh, included. So it is not something to take lightly. It's not necessarily, uh, it's definitely not a good first issue type of thing. Um, so uh, for the developer architecture, there are a few pages where there's just nothing available on the page. So it does need content or uh, we need to figure out whether or not that's going to be a valuable um, section to include. Um, I think there was, yeah, these uh, two system administration pages that I found with Chef and with Puppet, there is no content. Um, I haven't honestly heard anything about either of these in some time. So I don't know, for instance, how relevant those would be if it's worth keeping those pages, if we should look at other options, maybe there's a different um, tool to do the administration with so um yeah there, there's just some ideas again and i've put some notes on things that they where they do have some content um, and might just need further information or expertise um so uh yeah just there's a good amount of stuff um but i noticed that there's also uh probably 40 percent of the pages do have content and it's more a, it seems like it's not finished, then there's nothing there. Um, and then uh, one of the other, a couple of the other things that I noticed, uh, so with the recent update uh, for the XML values not reading null, uh, backward compatibility, I think might need to be updated for that. I'm not 100% sure, but that when I was reading that seemed to come up. Uh, a de the developer uh, navigation itself is unordered uh, in any seeming way. So I submitted a pull request uh, earlier today just to reorder them in alphabetical order. Uh, I'm not saying that this has to be the way, uh, but going from this to this just feels a little bit cleaner and nicer to read. Um, I would also be open to putting these in uh, in order that makes sense workflow wise for the developer, like if uh, we want to start with, um, you know, initialization or uh, just building and debugging something very straightforward and then 
um, you know, releasing plugins and stuff can go, or pub publishing plugins could go down here. Um, if there is a workflow order that would make more sense for a user going through this documentation, I'm 100% open to it and happy to change things accordingly. Um, I just figured that we could, uh, this would be a quick low hanging fruit, something easy that we could just make the navigation and topics a little easier to uh, navigate. So, yeah. Um, any thoughts, questions, concerns on the developer documentation stuff, Marco Bruno? No? All right. Okay. So uh, then that covers everything I had for the agenda today, if that's taken care of. So uh, the recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it and uh, take care. Bye now.